Welcome to Learn Electrics and this video about measuring earth leakage currents. All electrical circuits will have some leakage to earth. This may be through the cable insulation, through transformers, computers or kettles, many different sources. So we will look at what earth leakage is and why it can be a problem. And most importantly, how do we test it? If we look at the wiring regulations, we will find on page 154, regulation 531.3.2. This regulation talks about unwanted tripping of RCD devices. It tells us that residual current devices should be selected and erected such as to limit the risk of unwanted tripping. There can be few things worse for your customer than having to reset the RCD twice a day. The regulations also suggest that we should consider subdividing the circuits in such a way that we spread the earth leakage between RCDs and further reduce the likelihood of nuisance tripping. The regulations suggest that, in normal use, the leakage currents should not exceed 30% of the RCD operating current. There is a requirement to measure earth leakage currents on each RCD device when an electrical installation is completed. The test will establish if the background earth leakage exceeds the 30% limit. The 30% recommendation means that a 30 milliamp RCD should not have more than 9 milliamps of background leakage. And it is a good idea to check the leakage currents in the installation before quoting for work on the installation. It is far better to be forewarned of potential problems before offering a quote. This is especially true if you are quoting for a consumer unit change from an older non-RCD type to a newer board with the latest RCDs fitted. The preferred method for measuring earth leakage currents is with a clamp meter, an earth leakage current clamp meter. There are many manufacturers and many of these meters will have additional functions and varying ranges of sensitivity. A clamp meter is considered a safe method for testing as it literally just clamps around the cables without the need to break into the circuit. When choosing a clamp meter, it is a great advantage to have one with a milliamp range as well as amps. We are looking at readings that may be a lot less than one milliamp at times and these may not show accurately on the 100 amp or greater ranges. What is leakage current? The answer might surprise you. Let's start with a simple scenario. 5 amps leaves the consumer unit along the phase wire, but only 4.99 amps returns on the neutral. Subtract one from the other, and we are left with the number 0 0.01. To make it easier to read the milliamps, just put a zero on the end of the number to make it 0 0.010. Now it is easy to read. The end number, the right hand end, is a 10. This is the answer, 10 milliamps of leakage current. What happens to this missing 10 milliamps? There is a little saying that we use. The amps won't leave home if they can't get back home. 5 amps out, we must get 5 amps back. This explains a fundamental law in electrics that says that what goes out must come back, all of it. So, the missing 10 milliamps must get back home somehow. It must have found an earth path back to the consumer unit. But the earth cable may not be the only earth path. There could in fact be several routes for the earth currents to return, not just the earth conductor. So it makes sense not to test the earth leakage just by the earth cable alone. We must also consider other metalwork and other pathways. It is more accurate to measure the difference in current between the phase wire and the neutral wire. Whatever is missing is the true leakage, which will include not just the earth cable, but all the other pathways that may exist. Look at this drawing. If we only consider the earth cable, what do we get? 10 amps flows out on the brown phase wire, 9 amps returns on the neutral. If we take a leakage current reading on the earth conductor, 
we have 0 0.6 amps returning. Add the neutral and the earth currents together and we have 9.6 amps. Clearly a wrong answer as they do not add up to 10. However, if we measure the phase and neutral together, they will partly cancel each other out. The meter will now show one amp of earth leakage current. This is the correct answer, since nine plus one gives us 10 amps returning, the same as went out on the phase. This means that 0 0.4 amps must have returned by some other route, perhaps metalwork in the installation. We now know that earth leakage currents are not just those currents in the earth conductor. An RCD does not monitor earth conductor currents, it monitors all the earth leakage currents by comparing the outgoing phase currents to the returning neutral currents. If the difference, what is missing, exceeds a preset value, then the RCD device will operate and disconnect the supply. And the normal use, everyday background leakage, can sometimes add up to enough to cause unwanted tripping. We must not consider just the earth conductor currents. We must take all the leakage currents into account. And the earth leakage current should not exceed 30% or 9 milliamps for a 30 milliamp RCD. Look at these definitions. Leakage current is all the electrical currents that appear in unwanted paths under normal operating conditions what we call background leakage. Protective conductor currents, though, are just those in the protective conductor, the earth conductor. Now, unintentional leakage is the current that leaks between phase and earth, insulation breakdown, for instance, leakage that we do not want to happen. Whilst intentional leakage, on the other hand, is deliberately introduced leakage. It is what we will find in filter circuits for computers, printers and smart TVs, etc. An example of unintentional leakage, as we said, is insulation breakdown. No insulating material is a perfect insulator and they will all degrade and break down over time. This is one reason that we carry out insulation resistance tests and often see a drop in value with older installations. Electric current will gradually leak from the phase to the earth and sometimes into any metalwork in contact with the cables and the longer the cable, the worse the problem. Intentional leakages are those that are designed in by manufacturers of equipment. A very common example are interference suppressors in computer power supplies and surge protective devices installed at the point of use. By their very nature, they will leak currents to earth it is how they do their job. As shown here, a typical interference suppressor or filter will consist of a resistor and capacitor array that is designed to work with the 50 cycle frequency and the 230 volt supply. If we look at a normal waveform that might arrive at your computer, it will be dirty. There will be pops and crackles and spikes superimposed on the waveform and these have been picked up by the cables around the house. It could be an electric drill, the washing machine, the vacuum cleaner, lots of things. These spikes and interference will travel along the house cables and enter the computer power supply where they may cause your computer to lose data. The inbuilt filter that is installed in the power supply will always be in a just turned on state. It will always be leaking a tiny amount of current so that as soon as a spike appears, it can suppress it and send the current to earth. Think of it as a taxi driver who is always sat there with his engine ticking over and his seatbelt on. As soon as a customer jumps into his taxi, he is off, almost before the door is shut. The filter works the same way. As soon as interference appears, it is sent to earth. The result is that all the spikes and interference are removed. What comes out is a nice smooth waveform that is unlikely to cause you problems. How do we do the tests? Remember, the clamp meter coil, the jaws, must only encircle the phase and neutral cables, not the earth. And they must only encircle the conductors of the circuit under test. And the jaws must be fully closed. Any gap 
will give a false reading. The same with three phase conductors. All three phases for the circuit and the neutral must be enclosed in the clamp meter coil. Do not include cables from any other circuit as this will compromise the results. This is a simple sketch of an installation. We have a main switch at the consumer unit, two RCDs protecting three MCBs each and a standalone RCBO. What do we test and where? We begin at the main switch. It is, after all, where the electricity enters the installation. We place the test jaws around both the phase and neutral conductors where they come out of the main switch. The property must be in normal use. Equipment must be turned on. Turn the fridge and freezer up so they are actually on. Turn the TV and the kettle on, etc. It is no good testing a circuit with everything turned off and unplugged. The numbers you get will be the earth leakage current for the whole installation covered by that consumer unit or distribution board. And write this number down. Now we know what the whole thing is, we can do the same test on each RCD device and RCBO. Test at the load side of each RCD device. In the example shown, this is a 30 milliamp device, so the leakage current should not exceed 9 milliamps. This is the reading for all the parts of the installation that this RCD protects. If the reading is high or close to 9 milliamps, then we should investigate. If the reading is high, or if the two RCDs are very different in value, then the next step is to test each MCB circuit individually. Turn all the breakers, the MCBs, off for that RCD. Connect around the phase and neutral cables on the load side of the first MCB and turn it on. Check the readings, write the answer down. Now repeat the same process for the second circuit breaker. Continue like this until they are all tested. The readings may indicate that one circuit in particular is giving a high result and this is perhaps where we might have to focus our attention. A quick recap of what we've done so far. Looking at our simple schematic for the installation, we can see that our first test is carried out at the main switch. The next tests are carried out on the load side of the first RCD and all everyday equipment should be turned on in an operating state. You are trying to simulate the worst case conditions. Work your way along each RCD, RCCB, RCBO, etc. until they have all been tested. You are looking for the readings to be below 30% of the tripping current for each RCD device. In this case, it is 9 milliamps or less individually at each of the three devices. Now, if we need to, we check each MCB separately and test the phase and neutral for each circuit in order to establish if there is a problem and which MCB might be the problem. Looking at our results for the whole thing, do we need to consider balancing the loads? Let us suppose that we did our tests and the test on the first RCD indicated a leakage current of 6 milliamps, but the second RCD showed 10 milliamps of leakage. This is above the 9 milliamps recommended maximum for a 30 milliamp RCD. If we have tested the circuit breakers too and written down all our results, we should know the spread of readings that we have. Can we exchange a circuit from the first RCD with a circuit from the second? In this case we can. The bottom circuit in each MCB stack can be exchanged and we now have 8 milliamps across each RCD. If you've exchanged circuits like this, you must remember to move the corresponding neutral conductor between neutral bars, as well as moving the MCB and the phase conductor. The phase and neutral must stay together as a pair on the same half of the board. By balancing the earth leakages on the RCDs, you are helping to reduce the likelihood of nuisance tripping for your customer and you're also complying with the requirements of the wiring regulations. Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you added more knowledge about earth leakage testing to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you'll have access to all of our tech tips videos 
and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of the videos. And we also have Tech Tips articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.